everybody, it's Gina from Brownie Knits. Welcome to episode six of the Brownie Knits podcast. I apologize that I didn't um, podcast last week. It's been a little while actually. But as a lot of you know, around the holidays, time just absolutely gets away from you. And in a flash, you've got a couple weeks that have gone by. So it's been no different here in Indiana. It's been very, very busy during the month of December. Uh, today is December 29th, 2014, and I, not that she is electronically minded, but a, a big happy birthday shout out to my aunt Dory, who has a birthday today. So, um, I thought I would share some of our Christmas celebrations um, with you and some of the crafting that I did with my nephews and things like that and um, also go through what Santa brought to our household and uh, just some fun stuff. So one of the great things about living in the Indianapolis area, I actually live in a town that's north of Indianapolis, um, so it's more of a suburb, but when people ask me where I'm from, I just say Indianapolis because people rec recognize it and it's so close that you know we just pop down for anything that we want to go see, um, plays and things like that. So one of the Indianapolis um, holiday traditions is called Yuletide. And it is a singing and dancing show um, that they put on in December leading up to Christmas. And um, there are certain acts that stay the same each time. And one of those is reading um, the night before Christmas and that's when Santa arrives um, and all the kids love that um, you'll see a lot of children um, I guess you could say children of all ages <laughs> from 0 to 99 kind of thing um, at Yuletide no matter what showing you go to um, and this year my husband um, in November I, I take a monthly watercolor class at our local library and in November and December my husband um, takes those Thursdays off and we take the art class together because he usually has some extra vacation days to blow through. And so we decided that we would go to Yuletide the afternoon of one of those Thursdays. And one of our favorite things about Yuletide that is the same in every show are the dancing Santas. So I grabbed, let's see if I can find it very fast, I grabbed one of the programs from Yuletide because you're not allowed to tape or take any photos but I grabbed a program of the Dancing Santas so they do like a little tap dance number and it's really cute and very fun to see and at the end of the first half of um, right before intermission they snow will blow down on you so um, onto the audience and then they have um, wassail and um, I think milk and cookies for you to purchase in the lobby and you can bring those in and have your drink and cookies during the show. So on our um, Thursday this year that we went, we got up early, went to art, art class, and I'll show you that in a second. And then we drove down, ate lunch at our favorite, favorite lunch spot, which is also a market, um, of, and they specialize in local, um, locally raised um, animals and uh, cheeses and all those kinds of things, um, local produce, all that kind of stuff. So they make the most amazing sandwiches. And um, so we had lunch there and bought some of our favorite meats from them because it is a little bit of a drive so we don't get there all that often. And so we went there for lunch and then um, drove around for ages looking for parking in downtown. We ended up parking at the city county building um, parking lot. I guess people didn't want to go park over in that area. But it was only a few blocks from um, the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra, which is where Yuletide is. It's part of the, the symphony. And so it just so happened that it snowed on our walk over. It was frigid and there was this white, beautiful, puffy snow coming down for us to go in the Yuletide. So that was really kind of neat. Um, that's really the only snow we've gotten here in December this month, this year. 
which is crazy that uh, I saw an article yesterday saying that for us this is the least snowiest um, December on record since 1941 which after last um, winter I will absolutely take that so but it was perfect that that's when it chose to <laughs> snow so um, it really put us in the Christmas spirit so anyway that's the Yuletide and the Dancing Santas so if you live in Indiana and you're looking for something to do around the holidays that's kind of special that's a great one. We took our oldest nephew, who's now 11, um, we took him to see the Yuletide when he was, he was probably about six, but I think I might try to take my youngest nephew next year, um, cause he'll be five, um, so. And I don't, I probably will not always show my art because my watercolor I take the watercolor class to, because I'm always working from my home, so I take the watercolor class so that I have a reason to go out in public at least once a month and interact with other people. And it's kind of nice to try another hobby outside of the fiber arts. Um, I'm not in, I'm not very good at it, but it is kind of fun to do. And in this one, usually she'll have a study and you will draw in pencil the major outlines of the stuff. So you do have to draw a bit, although she helps you with that if you are struggling. And then, um, then we do our watercolor painting on top of that. So we do have an outline. So for this one, she only drew in the horses and the little sleigh, and then we had to draw everything else in. And then we used masking to like on these white parts of the tree we used what's called masking so you put that down and then you can paint like you can paint your green tree over that masking and then when it's dry when your paint is dry you can use um your thumb and roll the masking off it's kind of, it's almost like the sticky tapes that are on the back of um you know gift cards and stuff like that it's sort of like that, you roll that off, and then you have a white, your paper color, showing. So I did the watercolors and the masking, and then I came home, and you can't see it very well here. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, it's not really showing up because it's white. So we go back further, maybe. I actually, there you can see it. I got out my acrylic paints, and I went in and put white acrylic on some of the snowy bits to give it a kind of a 3D effect. So anyway, I thought it turned out kind of cute. Um, in the study, the little people were supposed to have like sweaters and hats on and stuff. And I decided to have them wrapped up in some little plaid blankets. So I kind of liked that one. Every now and then I get one that I really like how it turned out and I'll frame it and have that out. So. Um, since I haven't shown those on the podcast before, as we go through those seasons, like there's one, there's a bunny that I did for Easter that I still can't believe I was able to do it. Lots, all the credit <laughs> goes to the art teacher for um, what she taught me so that I could do it. So, but it's kind of fun to get out and do that at each month. So, and then um, after we. So we had art class, and then we went to our favorite lunch spot, then we went to Yuletide, and then we went to our favorite dinner spot, which is a Greek restaurant downtown. So we just had a really great day, and um, it was just a fun day, and it was really good in a year that's been pretty tumultuous for me to have such a fun day. Um, and then that weekend, my brother and his family, his wife and son, came up, and I mentioned he this is the nephew that liked to make the toilet paper turkeys at Thanksgiving so I had just craft after craft planned for us and I'll put a lot of those pictures at the end of the video at the end of the podcast because um, one of the things we did was a we built a snowman on the back of a door which was totally from Pinterest but it actually turned out you know sometimes those Pinterest things don't really work out but this one did, and he loved it, and it was a quick craft, so it would be really good for younger children, too. Um, 
I just used felt and pre-cut the felt and um, then the scarf we used construction paper and I let him color the construction paper and then we taped it all to the door to look like a snowman and he thought it was amazing so it's still up downstairs <laughs> and then we made I printed out a picture of him and then this sheet that again I found on Pinterest a link to where you could color in the parts and then you could elf yourself so he made we made a little Raleigh elf and he was on my Christmas tree so I don't know I might laminate him to keep him from getting bent and stuff over the years I think I might laminate him and then put like a little um, hole punch in his hat and tie a ribbon there so he can hang on the tree in the in future Christmas and then we made I got out the acrylic paints and Raleigh likes to call ornaments jingle bells so he kept saying we were making jingle bells and some of them turned out better than others. And this one, the idea is that you put their thumbprint on and um, you can see their, his little thumbprint there in the brown. And then I painted on the little antlers and the ear, or not the ears, the eyes and the nose um, with acrylic paints. So. He really thought that was cute um, and I liked it as well. And then we did, and this one's very popular on Pinterest, um, where you put their hand in white acrylic and have them then cup the ornament and go up and then you paint their little fingers into snowmen. And it was, it's really cute. So. Those are special. So I have those on the Christmas tree now too from that Raleigh made. And then I also got into a little bit of crafting mood for myself. Um, and I was watching the Dancing Geek epic four hour podcast. I didn't watch it live, um, but I watched it one day um, downstairs. And if you watched it, you know that he had like a little bitty, um, like a mini knit along during the episode to make a bird of happiness. And so I little, I made a little red bird of happiness and the pattern is by Sarah Elizabeth and it is a free pattern in Ravelry and you just need, you know, worsted weight and then needles that'll make it tight so that you can't see the stuffing and then you need the stuffing. It's such a clever little pattern. Um, a lot of podcasters are, are making this one. I think a lot of people made it for um, the ornament along that um, was on the yarn, the um, Vula Mine. She had a ornament along and a lot of people made these. But it's so clever the way that she used your short row wraps to create the feather and um, the eyes and then your little beak comes out of where you end the bird. It was a cute, fun little pattern to do. I used Barocco Vintage and I think I probably, I think I did it on like a size four needle. So I thought I'd use my little sheep tree. I don't know if you can see them. It has little sheep. I got this years and years ago at a yarn shop, and I don't think the yarn shop's even there anymore. But it sits in the guest room in the sheep room. And then I have wanted to make, um, I, I love the Attic 24 blog. Um, and if you are a crocheter, you should check it out. Even if you don't crochet, if you're just a knitter, you should check out Lucy's blog because she's just so inspiring with her use of color and her creativity. And she had these star ornaments from years ago. And on Lucy's, you actually use beads, smaller, much smaller than what I have here, on the points, and then you use a button in the center. Well, I've had these beads that were pretty pricey, 
I've had them for close to 10 years. I had this bright idea I was going to learn how to do jewelry and make a bracelet. And I never got around to it. And I thought, uh, why don't I just use them finally after 10 years? And it became this little star ornament. And I love him because he's got like all this little character. He's just, I feel like he should just like start walking or something. He's just funny. And I used, um, what did I use? The teal is actually Madeline Tosh DK leftovers from one of my slouchy honey hats that I designed. And then the white is DK, Broco Vintage DK, and the cream is actually Broco Vintage Worsted. It's just little leftover bits I had of stuff that coordinated. And this is a free pattern too on Lucy's blog, and she does a great um, tutorial of everything that she designs. With everything going on, those are, all, you know, these two plus the, the different things that we did are a lot of my finished objects, um, but I had a couple others really fast. So I mentioned um, in my crossover episode with Christina from A Knitter's Life that I wanted to make a pair of Hermione socks. And when I went up earlier this year to Simply Socks, I grabbed a skein of Madeline Tosh Tosh Sock in modern fair isle and you know sometimes you pair a yarn with a pattern and you think it doesn't really didn't really turn out the way you wanted it to but not this time this time it really turned out well and i don't know if you'll be able to see how well just in video and in, oh yeah you can so it really shows off both the texture of the sock and the colors in the yarn so well I just love them. And even though it's a fingering weight yarn with the Hermione structure, they feel so much thicker to me and warmer. Um, just just kind of tighter, um, I guess, gives that feel to it. And I did give in and get my medium sized sock blockers from the Lupio, and they work just fine for my foot. So if you're a US six and a half women's, the medium is the way to go. But I've already worn these a bunch. I, um, on Christmas Eve, we went to my in-laws house for, that was Christmas number two for us because we'd had Christmas with my family. So Christmas number two was on Christmas Eve at my in-laws house and I was busily trying to get these done because I wanted to get them done to be able to cast on um, socks on that pair of needles the next day as part of the little bobbins cast on. And I got them done, and I also wanted to be able to wear them Christmas Day. And I got them done, and um, I wore them on Christmas Day. But I started Nutkins as part of the knit along, and I got half the sock done. And I was using a larger needle, which because I'm usually a loose knitter, and I was worried about using that larger needle, but I didn't have a one yet. I do now. Santa brought one. Um, so I was using a two. And it was so tight and I'm, I was worried it was going to be loose and it wasn't. It was super tight and I just, I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and I enjoyed this one so much that I thought I'm not going to keep doing this. So what I did cast on on Christmas day or Christmas Eve night for the knit along, I had to rip out. So I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do, but I did have these all nice and ready to wear Christmas Day. So I was happy about that. And I talked a little bit last time about our Christmas traditions. And one of our um, Christmas Eve traditions is that we give each other a Christmas Eve gift that you can, um, then helps you stave off your excitement to open your gifts the next day. It gives you something to do. And my Christmas Eve gift, I got three skeins of turtle pearl yarns, striped turtle worsted in the trench coat colorway. And it's gorgeous. Three skeins of it. I was so excited <laughs> to get three. Um, I have plans for them. I'm not gonna say completely what they are because I haven't decided if it's gonna be a for sale pattern or not. But I did knit up one of them already. So I'm gonna show you a bit of this 
so that you can see how it knits up. Isn't it so cute? I just love it. And I've worn this, well, so our Christmas at home on Christmas Day was just Patrick and I, and that was Christmas number three. And I'll be completely honest, Christmas Day and the day after Christmas was super hard for me. Um, I was missing my mom a lot and I just, I do have side effects from the tumors in my body and when I get stressed I've noticed that they really kick into gear a lot more. So unfortunately I felt really lousy on Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. So I didn't get to go to a Christmas movie which is usually what we do in the afternoon and we usually do a little bit of shopping the next day and I didn't get to do that either. But that's okay. I'm hoping that that is just part of the morning process and you know next year it'll be a little bit easier and um, that kind of thing so anyway that was Christmas 3 and then Christmas 4 was number 4 was yesterday and that was a second Christmas at my in-laws house um, my sister-in-law lives in Miami and so she was during first Canals Christmas which was our second Christmas um, she hadn't flown in yet so this one was where she could be there too, um, along with her two brothers and her parents and then all the kids and, and all the, um, my mom used to call all of her um, sister and brother-in-laws that married the siblings, the outlaws. So I guess you'd say all of us outlaws were there too. But anyway, so I wore this to Christmas yesterday and I think I'll wear it out today, so. Um, Christina mentioned that she really wanted me to make sure I got the worsted in the cross upper episode we did together. And I have, I have this sock. I've had that for a while and I love these socks and I wear them all the time. But she wanted me to make sure I got it because I am really drawn to these colors together. It's kind of like the Burberry print colors. And this sweater that I have on is a Burberry sweater, and least you think I'm rolling in the dough, I'm not. I found this at a thrift store for uber cheap, and it was the, like brand new condition. It was not even 10% of what it was on retail when I looked online. And then I had a gift card, and I had store credit. So I took this sweater, this Burberry sweater home with me that day, for it was under 20 US dollars so I just it was my big find at the thrift store I'm never the person that finds like the great deals and so but anyway so it's kind of I can like coordinate all my little prints here so it's kind of fun um and then so that was Christmas Eve we exchanged our Christmas gifts and my husband loves scotch I get this wrong all the time. Scotch and whiskey is what he loves. And so I had gotten him a little kit of that so he could have some um, to drink that night on, at Christmas Eve. And he loved that. And then we got up the next morning and exchanged our gifts. And I spoke a little bit last time about the pickle ornament. And so this year, since it was just the two of us, it was Patrick's turn to hide the pickle and for me to find the pickle on the tree. And then I, you get this, if you find it, then you get the special pickle gift. And I was super excited and did not anticipate such a fabulous pickle gift. We never know quite, you know, it's always interesting to see what we come up with for each other. Well, I think the podcasting is making it easier for Patrick to shop for me because a lot of the things I've mentioned in past episodes showed up under the tree this year, which was fantastic. And I like I loved this bag on the Felt of Flower Shop's Etsy shop. And I had clicked love on it, but I was being a good girl. I already had a bag. I didn't need to get another one right. Well, the pickle gift 
was this bag with this beautiful felted rose on it that she made. And these are from Heather. This is um, actually Christina's sister, Heather. I don't know, I mean, Mrs. Winslow had has such crafty girls. Like they are just amazingly talented. And so is she, she's, you know, I've shown her stuff before. So, and then inside, well, first of all, sticking with the bag, it has this lovely polka dots. I love polka dots, so cute. If you looked at my Brownie Knits website and stuff, you know I love polka dots. So I thought it was really cute. Such a deep bag, it's so deep. What's in there? Yay! So, more Turtle Pearl Worsted. And this one is the Nano color. And this one is Ohm. Isn't it great? The colors are just amazing. And just like her sock, the worsted is a four ply too. So it also has that nice roundness to it. And it was funny that those colors were in there in worsted because I hadn't really said anything about those in worsted. And when I'd given Patrick my list of what I did want for Christmas, I had listed those two colors for sock. And in my regular presents, I did get those two colors. That's right, I have the worsted, I feel so spoiled. I have the worsted and the sock. Well, it turns out that when Patrick went up to the website, he thought he was ordering the sock and he was ordering the worsted. And so when they came in the mail, he was like panicked. And so he ordered the sock. So now I have all of them. So I'm very excited. I'm like swimming in turtle pearl yarn which is a good yarn to be swimming in. So that was a lot of fun. And I told myself that since I didn't go shopping the day after Christmas, um, I would let myself order a few things and I had ordered a few things earlier. So I tried to hold back as much as I could, but the things I ordered earlier, oh wait, I have one more thing that, one more thing of yarn that Patrick got me. So in watching podcasts, it's, it's expensive to watch podcasts, isn't it? Even though they're free, it's expensive because I see everything and I think, I want that. I want that. I want to try that out. I love hearing about the new yarns and I, I want them. I want to give them a spin and see, see how they work up and, you know, what I think about them. And I... One of the yarns that kept popping up that I wanted to try was um, Eden Yarns. Eden Yarns. And this is a, her gradient. I say her, I don't really know. I assume it's a her. I assume it's a part one person and not more. I don't know. Um, and this is Ombre Slate. Isn't it beautiful? And I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next podcast. Um, but I'm planning on doing a lot of shawl knitting in 2015. So I think that'll be a shawl. If you have a shawl suggestion, let me know. Oh, which that reminds me. So to enter giveaways for the late, the next giveaway will be late um, January. And to enter for that giveaway, there's a thread on the Brownie Knits Ravelry board titled getting to know you and I asked three questions in the in the thread so you answer those three questions and then that registers you for the next giveaway and people have been answering and it has been so much fun to see how people came up with their Ravelry name um, because I think a lot of people thought oh you know it, it seems obvious because they know their own story like for me mine's obvious because it was my last name but, uh, you know, nobody out there knows that really. So it was really fun um, to see how people came up with their different um, Ravelry names. And then the third question is like, what your favorite project is that you ever made? And some of the things that have been listed, um, it's so much fun to see, There's, you know, how it is. There's so many patterns in Ravelry. And um, a lot of times the same one keeps brought, being brought up over and over. It's fun to see some different ones listed that really are so super deserving of the attention. So 
If you haven't done so, go up and answer those questions so you can register and then you know read through some of the other answers. They're just really entertaining and, and fun to see. I found it really interesting. And the next podcast is the one where we start the block blanket for 2015. So it'll be the first Wednesday of each month of that will load and the and the um, block for that month will go up and I'll talk a little bit about the block each each time um, that I release one so I hope you join us it's 200 yards of worsted weight yarn for a block they're gonna be 12 blocks total and you can do them all in the same color you can do them all in different colors um, you could even use different yarn for each block as long as it's all worsted weight I'll talk a little bit once we get going about you know how to manipulate if they don't all exactly come out 12 by 12 so um, you can kind of make that work um, yeah so I hope you join us and I do have a block blanket thread started in Ravelry and I'm also um, I also tell you there the tag to use for your um, tagging it on Instagram and Ravelry for your, for your project once we start it so we can share photos I'll have that running along the bottom of this podcast as I speak. And then um, we also, what else was I going to say? There was something else about it I was going to say. Oh, um, this week I'll have, I'll be working with my husband to um, come up with a little logo for the, the knit along. So if you don't want to post pictures each month um, and, or, or if you want to post the pictures within your Ravelry project, but have the main one be the knit along symbol, you can. It's not really, I'm not really treating it as a mystery knit along because you will actually see the finished block on the day that it comes out. Um, so you don't have to feel like you have to hide it or anything. But in case you want to use that, you can. Um, okay, so I was talking about that I had ordered some yarn for myself. And like I said, watching these podcasts, <laughs> um, you decide I really need to give that a, a try. And I really... Um, enjoyed watching Bull and Vine's podcast and her she was talking about how well her Outlander colorway was selling and I my ears perked up because I love Outlander and it's just gorgeous I you can order it you can pick which um, base of hers you want it on this one is on her lush base which is a two ply fingering. It's 80 10 10. So superwash merino and then 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It feels amazing and the colors are gorgeous. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but it's beautiful. So I was very excited to get that in the mail. And then Dancing Dog Dye Works put up. Um, a new batch of yarn for sale and I was able to grab a skein of this and this is um, her twist sock in the gingerbread houses colorway it's so cute I love the teals and greens and blues in it I don't know that they're showing up as vibrant they're really rich um, in person I think the the lighting might be washing those out a little bit. So I was very excited to get that little package in the mail as well. So between all of the holiday um, activities and playing Auntie um, with Raleigh and yesterday at um, Canal's Christmas, my little niece Ella, remember I said that I was most excited out of all the gifts I got to give Ella her gift. And I got her a dress up dress and she loved it and it fit her perfectly. She put it on pretty much right away and then she was posing um, in it and spinning around. And I'll put at the end of the podcast, I'll put a picture of her in her little dress. It was adorable. And I got her um, in her stocking that I made her, I gave her a bunch of books. And so I, she wanted me to hold her and read all six books to her. So we read. I'm very well versed in Pinkalicious now. So that was fun to see. It was also really fun to see the excitement on 
our nephew Jack's face. He got we got him a set of um, Ninja Turtle Legos, and I guess we purely by chance picked up the one he'd been eyeing for a long time in the store, and he sat behind the couch putting that together. And he is okay. They're all stair stepped. He's he's in kindergarten. Yeah. Wow. He sat behind the couch and put that thing together. Like he was so meticulous and analytical with it. And it was really impressive to see. And his parents were Im impressed as well. Cause I guess he just started doing this, um, this Christmas before it was always, you know, dad would help. And he only came to us, usually his dad or one of his uncles, if he had really, really tried to find the piece a long, for a long time before. So it was really fun to see the excitement that he had and Ella playing. Our oldest nephew, he had, uh, he just turned 11 and had his birthday party earlier this month. And, um, you know, he's at that age where it's, as his dad said, nobody's, you know, we're not cool anymore. But I did, you know, yesterday I was able to sit with him and uh, chat a little bit about basketball with him. So that's what we kind of have in common. So we talk about basketball and, you know, what we think is happening and that kind of thing. So it was just fun to be with all of my nephews and my niece this time of year. Um, and speaking of basketball, we've had some more games. And so here are my basketball results socks. They're coming along. I've placed in the afterthought heel thread. Oh, we lost the last game. We went into overtime against a pretty good competitor and we were really, we played pretty well except for like four frantic minutes that probably did us in. Um, but <laughs> not that I want the cream stripes because that means we lose, but they're turning out quite nicely. And um, the Indiana University is known for the candy stripe pants. So if you don't know what that is, you can Google Indiana University candy stripes and they'll show up. And they're our warm up pants that our guys wear. And a lot of fans have them. I do have a pair. I don't wear them in public, but they're striped and they're red and white stripes and they're more, let's see, they're closer together than here. Um, but so it's kind of funny that they're turning out a little bit striped like that. And it was pure chance that they won the same number of games between these two um, losses. So it, they came out quite balanced. My brother-in-law thought I had done that on purpose and I was like, no, I, I didn't get to choose. So it's funny. Um, let's see. The other thing that I have been working on I put together my journal and started using it already for 2015. So I went through and cut out things that I thought were inspiring. And I got all of the items to make my journal as part of my Christmas gifts from Patrick. So I cut out things that I thought were inspiring and made, taped them down to the covers, and then used mailing tape to tape them over so that they don't get anything spilled on them. I'm really glad I did that because I spilled um, a drink last night and the tape saved it from already being ruined. I haven't even hit January 1 yet. And then my mother-in-law made several years ago these little knitting tabs. Are they cute? And they have a little magnet inside. And so I'm using those this time to divide my journal into three parts. So my first part, my thickest part will be my own designs. because that's what I use the majority of my journal for. And then the second part, starting with this tab, will be podcast notes. And so they'll have, it'll have notes like I have the notes for today's podcast that I'm doing right now on here. But I also take notes when I watch other people's podcasts because um, there's just so much good information in them. And then the third section is I went with miscellaneous. And right now, miscellaneous starts off with my goals for 2015. They're not resolutions. They're just more like 
goals. Um, to me, there's a big difference, but I'm not really sure how to verbalize that and get it across. I don't want to put, I, like, I don't feel pressured to get them done, but there are kind of things that I would like to achieve. And I really usually do this about twice a year, not just beginning of the year. I usually, around June, we'll start thinking a little bit more about the fall. So some of them are like, you know, things I want to do that I think will be fun for us to try and do during the summer or so, stuff like that. Sometimes there are things that updates we need to do to the house. Sometimes they're browning its business goals. Um, but one of the things I said I wanted, I, I always set them for myself, right? And I told my husband, I gave him a challenge. I gave, he loves to, he's, I love to read and he's so quick. And he'll read the most amazing collection of titles. <laughs> but um, so I gave him a reading challenge that I found, and I had a list of like all these kind of obscure things that you have to find a book that is set in your hometown and read a book that your mom loved and things like that. And so I told him he could give me a couple. So one of his challenges for me is to make six projects for myself. I don't think that'll be a problem. I used to have a real problem with never knitting for myself. I don't seem to have that anymore, but he wanted to make sure that I at least did six projects next year for myself. Um, and then the other one he gave is a goal for both of us, which is to walk in at least four or five Ks. So he's right, we need to exercise more. So <laughs> more, I need to do it, period. I used to be really good about it, and then I lost my mojo after everything this year. But I did, like, on the inside front cover, I put some photos. That's my Graham with me in the center at my wedding. The bottom photo is a photo I took at the Kensington Garden. Um, so it's a rose there in the garden. And then some pictures of friends and, and my husband. So, And then I went through and added in on some pages I added in like this is a card that my aunt Dory made me and then I clipped things from magazines that I thought were inspiring and kind of pasted those in but I didn't go overboard on the ones inside because one of the gifts I got um, that will you know come in the future in the mail although I did clip I love this little bangle isn't that cute um, Patrick got me a subscription to Molly Makes Magazine, so I'm planning to each month clip out things from that magazine that I love and put those in as well. So that's another finished item. So I thought that was kind of fun. And as I closed it, I now closed my podcast notes. So I just need to go back to my tab. Ta-da! There I am. All right. Let's see. Uh, I think we probably have pretty much covered almost all of it. There is a little video that I'm going to tap on to the end um, of the podcast. And we have a, it's called Reynolds Farm Equipment um, here in the town next over from us. And every year they do a light display and a lot of the displays are arranged in the shape of like tractors and things like that because they are a farm equipment place but it's a free light display and you drive through it so we drove my nephew who is car and truck obsessed we took him over and drove him through it and listened to Christmas carols on the way over and all that kind of fun stuff so I took a little video of that that I'll include here at the end of the podcast and then we'll have some photos of um, our Christmas celebrations. So I hope that you stick around for those. Um, you can always find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Brownie Knits, one word. And some of the um, things that I showed today are pinned on my Pinterest board on, and on Brownie Knits on Pinterest as well, in case you wanted to check that out. I do hope that you'll go up to the Ravelry Brownie Knits group, Brownie Knits two words for the Ravelry group name, um, and join our group and um, join in the discussion and answer the getting to know you thread so you can get registered for the next giveaway. 
and um, and then take a look at the block blanket. Ask me any questions in the block blanket thread that you have, and I'll be back at the first Wednesday in January to launch the block blanket. I'm very excited to get that going, and I hope you guys are excited to knit along too. So, all right, now we're off to the Christmas lights display. Happy knitting and crocheting. Bye-bye.